What's up guys, we're back here, and actually recording, for um, the top three, I guess this would be what, spring, fall, winter? Spring, spring, spring 2019. Season. Uh, Anime season? Yeah, I mean, this is personal picks, because yeah, obviously, can't watch all no, the shows. It's, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not, it's not personal, it's that. actually objective. <laughs> Obje yeah. This um, is fact. Yeah. This is a matter of law. I think, yeah, it is a matter of law. I think combined, we've probably seen like five or six different shows if you include like the two Chinese shows that Josh yeah. has been watching. Um, and then I think one or two shows that I watched that he did not complete. Mm -hmm. So, um, what, I guess we're going to pick our top three here. What kind of was the highlights in general this season that you noticed? Uh, well, if we're just going off of like, you know, Japanese ones first. Uh, you know, obviously, Mob was back. That was a huge one because, you know, uh, what has it been, like, two, three years since the first season? So that was uh, one that was highly anticipated and one that I think, you know, like, I mean, I'm not going to go into detail with it, but I think it's finished very strongly. So that's definitely in the I think the community was happy. With oh, it. yeah, yeah. So. I mean, it throughout, it was really fun to watch and it had some great action. Uh, another big highlight, I would say, is Love is War. You know, we didn't know much about the source material, uh, but we read the synopsis when we first heard about it, and it was like, that sounds hilarious. And that show was indeed hilarious. And you're unique as well. Yeah. It was, it was unique. So that one's got to be up there. Uh, to, to be honest, uh, Slime, I don't know if we'd really consider Slime for 29, uh, for this, you know, season, even though it, I'd say maybe half or more than half aired this. But if we were to include it, I still don't know if it'd be... Uh, top three material just because I think the back half kind of teetered off a little bit uh, But those would be probably the three worth mentioning for me out of like the Japanese anime of the season So yeah, just <clears throat> going uh, off on that we'll get to my top three yet, but um that was not my top Yeah, three. Just, just, like, it's just like it's not top three. Yeah, but, just um, mentioning. So uh, I think it's Rise of the Shield Hero also came out this, which kind of True. played a similar role that Goblin Slayer played last season in the sense But probably a way better yeah, it was a better anime. Yeah, yeah. But people got, like, outraged by it. But, you know, so now... Um, oh, fuck those people. That's, that's, sorry. <laughs> that's definitely getting bleeped. No, it's okay, not really. Okay, it's not really. But, um, yeah, so that that was interesting because you got that controversy. And then, for the most part, I think it was a success. I don't, I don't, I didn't watch the finale because I kind of already knew the source material from reading it. But that was an interest, at least an interesting um, anime that uh, pushed limits similar to how Goblin Slayer did last season. Um, and then, um, besides that, you have, uh, Quintessential Quintuplets, which was kind of, I, I don't even think that's the full title. I feel like there's another word there, but maybe Was that show Essential, though? It was. I think Essential was also in the title. But, um, Quintessential? So, <laughs> Quintessential, yeah, I, think, I don't know, who cares? <laughs> but, uh, that show was, was interesting, um, kind of as the slice of life, uh, harem, uh, <laughs> school life kind of thing. It, it was, it was, uh... Tutoring as well was a major theme, and that was kind of a comedy that hit me out of nowhere because I didn't hear much about it. But the community accepted it pretty well, and uh, there's still the debate uh, with the ending. There's still a debate of who the girl is, but people I think are responding well to it. And uh, pretty overall, sure that's still debatable amongst the source material. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, who cares? It's not <laughs> that's not the point of the show. But no. overall, I think it, it was it was great to see at least those those different characters, and uh, I think it was successful both in Japan and in mm -hmm. the states. Uh, besides that, I'm trying to think other any other Japanese shows that came out exclusively. There were some sequels, but I never really got into it too much. And obviously, like Black yeah. Clover is continuing, but I, nothing True. nothing else really stood out for me. What about what about you? What are some other shows? That um, you, uh, well, just to watch? highlight a couple of Chinese ones. I mean, obviously, the Chinese stuff. It's like you're kind of at the mercy of whoever wants to translate it. So, I mean, you have to really search if you have a particular one in mind. But just two that I came across that I actually found uh, enjoyable was, I think one's, uh, the full title is like The Adorable Food Goddess. That one's actually really funny. I guess it's like more of a, it's kind of a take, uh, or they take some aspects of like Food Wars. So if you really like that show, I mean, it's there. But I think it's it deals, I mean, obviously food's like a main part, but you know, it doesn't make that the main focus of the theme, if, if that makes any sense. But uh, that one was fun. I, I, I think it's like a comedy, like an act, because it does have a little bit of action in there, so like maybe more of like a comedy that has a slice of action in it. Uh, I think that one was a really fun show. The other one that I watched that I don't know necessarily if I would say it's uh, <laughs> as high of a tier as the other shows we've talked about, but uh, it's still pretty funny, and that was uh, Psychic Princess. I think that one's, if I had to describe it, I mean, I, I haven't been able to finish it, but at least from what I watched, it seems like it's 
kind of a reverse harem, or at least it tries to appear that way. So I think that's kind of a funny take, and it probably has the best worst opening song I have ever seen, and you should definitely go look at it <laughs> just yeah. to confirm nor deny my fact there. <laughs> definitely look that one up. That one's worth listening. And then, like, uh, Full Time Mage is technically, season three was technically... Was that last season? Yeah, I don't know. It may have been, it may have been winter. I think it was in I between. Think was, and, yeah, it might China's have been like, you know, they don't care about seasons yeah. or... But that was really good, I think. Yeah. I mean, you know, that's still probably not as high of a tier as, like, some Japanese shows that release in terms of, like, production, but it's still being improved a lot since, like, when it first yeah, started. Yeah, yeah, I and think there's definitely more Chinese shows kind of breaking into the mainstream in the, in the sense with their animation and their ability. I mean, you have... Um, th there's the one show that has to do with competitive. I can't remember. It's, like, the, King, the King's Major. I don't know. But it, it, it's the show... Uh, it's the show that's like really famous because it's like a guy who's esporting WoW pretty much, and that's what that follows. And that Chinese show is like really, um, really high production, really well made. So we'll have to see if like Tencent, mm. you know, you, you had like Outcast, I think in the in the Outcast season two, I think yeah. in the uh, in the winter. So I we'll have to see how that kind of continues to develop in the scene and see if we get more translated into English, both officially and unofficially, in the near future. So, um, as far as openings, I mean, I don't want to make this video too long, but. There are some really good openings. You have yeah. Mob, which is just kind of weird. It it's is kind of weird. weird. It's like one of those where I'm a little, in terms of like the song, I'm a little hesitant when the guy is singing. I mean, he's still fine, but like I just prefer the, the female vocalist a lot. Uh, so like when she finally kicks in, I'm like, okay, I can get behind this. But it is still like one of those I think it has to grow on you. Like when you first listen to it, I don't think you'll like it as much or like it more than the first one, but it's still really good. Yeah. The animation for it though is I think on par with the uh, the first <laughs> opening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, besides that, there's not really that many uh, other stands out besides well, Love, Love is War, War which L is... Love is War is great. I think everyone can say that that was the best opening. Um, it's just so it's different kind of retro. than a lot of other openings. Yeah, it's... You really just have to listen to it, and you it, know what we're saying. It kind of reminds me of, like, Kakaguri Season 1 opening, and it kind of reminds me a little bit about Zombie Land Saga's opening. Because there's, there's not as much um, English lyrics to it, besides, you know, like, the the title of it. <laughs> so, but it's, it's really great. I love it. Yeah, that's a good song. So top three, top three. Um, I can go first here, but I don't know what my third is. Let me just think for a second. <laughs> no, it's um, a great thing to do. Yeah, in the middle of the thing. video. <laughs> uh, no, I think I think for for number three, I think I'd have to go with Mob. Um, it like really? Josh was saying, it did. Right. There are some episodes where it does have kind of a slow start, um, and but overall the action was really great, and there are some themes that they dropped yeah. that I wish they picked up later. For example, like. His girlfriend, but not like the the main one in season one, but like the secondary one. What it, what is she doing with her life? We'll never find out. The She's world may riding, never know. You're talking about the one that's writing the manga. Yeah, exactly. Well, the world may never know what happens to her. She's monetizing off a of mom in another way, but yeah, probably. Um, and so there's some themes that they dropped that I wish they would have picked up. But overall, like the relationship between him and his sensei, and, and uh, the bad guy, and all the all the. Characters they introduce or reintroduce, um, mm. I was happy with their role. So that's going to be my number three. I think for me, three, this is going to be really hard to say because I have several shows that I could say are my three uh, because I finished them. But to be honest, I think I'll have to go with it. I, I, I think Food Goddess, I like that one a lot. Uh, there was just some things about it that I think made it a more enjoyable show than maybe like Slime or... Uh, quintessential quintuplets for me personally, but uh, plus I just think, uh, you know, I want to mention it because out of like what you were saying, progressing forward in like Chinese animation, that one's probably the the prettiest one I've seen and has a lot of work gone into it, so it's pretty Also, cool. it was the King's Avatar. That was, that's the, the King's Avatar. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the show. Uh, just, <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that up. So what's your number two then? Is uh, that your number two? Is no. that even? Because <laughs> that, that came out like two years ago. Oh. So uh, oh. my number two is oh. yeah. uh, Love is War. Uh, so we talked a lot about the opening, everything. Um, overall, I think this is the show I'll remember the most. But for personal reasons, I, I made my number one choice. I think <laughs> yeah. it, since it's my, my list, I'll, I'll make it that way. Yeah. But Might moving well. forward, you know... A year recap, I think Love is War is going to be on my list because it was very, it was very, uh, yeah, very entertaining. Which, and there wasn't really a, a moment that I didn't enjoy. There's one episode that I didn't like that much, but there wasn't that many moments that I didn't, you know, laugh or have fun watching. So, 
Yeah, at this part of the video, you're just gonna be hearing us talk about the same ones over again. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> because uh, my second is uh, Mob, uh, you know, season two. I really like it. You know, I'm not gonna reiterate things that Michael said because I pretty much agree with what he said. But I think what really stood out for me is just uh, how strongly it ended. I think they brought some really great action at the back half that just kind of, you know, lived up to uh, what I wanted out of the season. And I'm really excited for, you know, the next season going forward because of how they ended. It so looking forward, really love it. Speculation, <laughs> speculation. See you in four yeah. years with speculation. <laughs> um, right. so for me, probably uh, this is uh, probably the dark horse. I, rem I remember watching this, I think, probably when they were three or four episodes out for everything else. Um, it, that's when I picked up Quinn Central Quintuplets. I think I, I watched the first four, the, you know, like the same night or whatever because I really like Miku, she's the best. Um, but I don't know, it, it just um, resonate with me in the sense that the characters are more alive. Um, you know, they spend a couple of episodes on each girl, um, well, focused, you know, the other characters going to be in there. But I, I did appreciate that each one of them is pretty well developed and you get to know, like, that side of them. And then even after that, like, Miku's the first girl you, you, you see, you still get moments, you know, throughout the whole show where you, you know, you get more of her personality or the development of you know, her as a character, the, the different characters. So overall, it was really funny. It, it, the tone was great. The characters, I think, were very deep when, you know, usually in those harem type shows, they're not. But each of them were, were unique. And I think only really one fit into a, like, Iron Cast stereotype that we've seen in anime. Obviously, we've seen variations of other characters, but it was still... I still found it unique when maybe I just, you know, don't watch that much in the genre, so I'm not too familiar with all the different stereotypes. But overall, it was great, and uh, that's that's going to be a number one choice. It was my favorite anime. Side note, I love how all the positives about that you listed for that show is all the positives I listed for another show a while back, and then you absolutely didn't like it. So that's just hypocrite. That's no, just opinions. opinions. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, that's opinions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I just like giving no crap. Anyway, so my uh, top one, again... One you've already been hearing about, Love is War. I think it's just, I don't know, I think it's a standout. I love all of the characters. I think having a smaller cast really helps it, you know, because they are able to develop the characters and, you know, you get to see a lot of them. That secretary, man. That secretary, yeah. Oh, man, it's really hard to say which one's your favorite because they just teeter back and forth so much throughout that show, and I think that's what I really love about it. Uh, and I think, again, you know, the... It's something that keeps you engaged throughout the whole thing, and I absolutely love it. There is, like, probably maybe one or two episodes that have a couple skits in them that I could do without or could have something different. But overall, I'd say it was one that I found the most enjoyable out of the season. So, for that, it's... It's your choice. Yeah. It's number one. It's number one. Yeah, so we're excited for the summer season. Uh, we've been watching a couple different There's shows, actually. <laughs> Uh, one one of which I'm interested in, one of which I'm not. I don't remember. I've I've looked at, at some of those. There's uh yeah, I mean I don't another know tutoring you show. Heard. You know, we we can they're go all into the that. same. <laughs> and the, they're it's all the same shows. You know, you yeah, know, but it's anime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so spring overall, I think it was a good season. It, it was, wasn't. It was amazing. solid. Amazing. Yeah, it was solid. I think. Um, there wasn't that much expectation except for Mob going into it, and there were quite a few surprises um, for the community at large. And I'm excited to see some of which, where some of these shows go later on for season two. I would say summer and fall probably got a stronger presence of returning anime, so it's going to be interesting to see how they stack up uh, against, you know, or new arrivals stack up against those returning shows. Because yeah. we got some big ones coming. Yeah, and I'm, I'm always about finding, I don't know, maybe it's my inner hipster, but I'm always about finding, you know, that one. First season show that really blows you away. That really yeah, that hidden gem. That hidden gem really gets me. That you find in the diamond in the rough. Exactly. Yeah. That's three expressions. Yeah. Five I'm, seconds. Yeah. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for this recap and kind of review of the spring season. I almost said fall. It's not fall. And yeah, we'll be back so. with more anime content. We're going to do episode by episode. It's going to be a little bit delayed because you know we got some things we're taking care of. Yeah. In the near future, but uh, we're. I don't want to say we're going to do less of it, but just expect us to take a break a little bit. We're yeah. going to do one. We're going to come back for one at least in the summer, but because of scheduling, not sure if we're going to do more than that. But that's okay because it's your favorite topic. So, and we'll be uh, we'll be back with more uh, different kind of content. So, all right. Well, we'll see you guys next time with more anime, more comics, more books, and more content. That's a lot of content. Later, addicts. Peace. <laughs>